The 18 well, India has witnessed its driest August in 122 years. To discuss how this could impact the demand situation ahead of the festive season, we have Rupesh Shah, the Executive Director, Corporate Affairs at Symphony, who joins us now. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, Mr. Shah. I wanted to, uh, you know, start by asking you about the impact that this dry monsoon would have on the demand situation. Because across industries, we hear that demand has cooled off a little bit. Consumption patterns have slowed down, especially in the rural markets uh, or the tier two and tier three markets. Are you facing that as well? No, you are absolutely right. So, to an extent, especially in the month of August. From tier two, tier three, semi-urban and rural area, there is somewhat subdued uh, demand. Uh, however, considering uh, decent rainfall in June and July, at least in our case, whatever off-season collection we were expecting, we are almost meeting with the target. Uh, that is a cumulative target. All right. Um... Can you tell us how the inventory levels are currently? We understand that they're 10 to 15 percent lower than what they would normally be. And as a result of which, uh, and the increased demand that you're alluding to, would there be an increase in prices or reduction in discounts? So, this summer 23 was not a great summer from a uh, viewpoint of cooling industry. So, in some parts of the country, there was a decent sale and negligible inventory. However, in some parts of the country, there was an inventory. However, being such a large country, this is always bound to happen. Uh, however, uh, as far as uh, overall trade inventory is concerned, it is slightly higher than what it is supposed to be. As far as inventory with the company is concerned, it's absolutely normal inventory because what happens in our case, even during off season, that is monsoon and uh, winter, we do a decent sale to the general trade with 100% uh, advances. So that's not an issue. Related to your second question about the mm. discount or some schemes, there is no unusual discount. There is no unusual scheme. It is absolutely in line with earlier years. And if at all, we are targeting in current quarter and subsequent quarter, as, uh, especially on a standalone basis, improved and better EBITDA margin as it was guided earlier. Okay. Just on demand in the domestic market, based on the fact that August has been drier, the summer wasn't as great as anticipated, have you scaled down your volume targets for the entire fiscal as compared to what you had earlier anticipated? So as far as accounting year 23-24 is concerned, we haven't scaled down our volume target due to variety of strategies, due to our entry into exigency categories, which are not uh, related to season. Thirdly, mm -hmm. by the way, in summer 23, despite overall industry degrew, we increase our market share despite a stiff competition. So even though in June quarter YOY there is a degrowth as of now for year as a whole or subsequent quarters, we are neither budgeting nor planning any degrowth. Okay. Uh, so this 14-15% growth that you've seen in both FY22 and FY23, right? Uh, both the years saw about 14-15% top line growth. Do you think that is something that you can replicate in FY24 and FY25? If not, will it be a single-digit growth? Just trying to understand what the average growth over the next couple of years could be on the top line. So, rather than specifically for the year, medium term and long term, certainly we expect and estimate double-digit growth percentage on a CAGR basis. And as far as current year is concerned, we are expecting uh, double digit uh, percentage may not be a very high growth, but still double digit percentage growth considering sales in India, exports from India, also LSV, as well as other exigency category, ancillary category products into which we have entered. So all put together. All right. So uh, that's good. Uh, double digit growth is what you're targeting for this year, improving EBITDA margins as well as you had guided for. Just wanted a couple of uh, more details. One was uh, gross margin pressures. They've seen decent expansion in the first quarter, 
Will gross margins continue to be around this 49-50% sort of mark in uh, throughout the year as you are guiding for EBITDA margin expansion? Just wanted to understand if that comes in from gross margin expansion. And your new category, you did allude to a lot of new categories that you're entering. In particular, tower fans, how has that been? And what rate do you expect growth out there? Sure. So, as far as gross profit margin percentage is concerned, subject to any major increase in uh, input costs, whatever gross margin percentage we registered in June quarter, we expect it to maintain around that level. However, at immediate margin percentage due to variety of measures which we have taken and implemented in terms of the CODB reduction, in terms of rationalization of some of the strategies, we expect immediate margin percentage better than what it was. And we believe that that should be reflected in the standalone uh, September quarter result itself. As far as ancillary categories are concerned, it's basically surround and uh, duet category. And we are developing alternate channel for that. And we have also segmented the sales for that. And uh, at this point of time, they have registered decent traction. Okay. All right, Mr. Shah, we're going to leave it on that note. Uh, we, thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that is Symphony, where they are estimating double-digit growth for the fiscal. They haven't scaled down their expectations for the fiscal, considering that they do have other categories where they do expect performance to probably substantiate and uh, cover up any kind of losses on account of a poor summer as well as a drier August. We'll take a short break.